guys, Josh from Sun and Films, and I'm back with another one of my post-production tutorials. Now, in the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of requests for some text tutorials, um, and I thought, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and I'll do it for you guys, but if there's a lot of demand for it, then that's what we're going to cover. So, um, the text tutorials I'm going to be doing today uh, is when, um, like you see in the cinema, the text kind of flies past the camera, and when it kind of lands in the movie, you kind of slowly see it kind of disappearing back. Very cinematic looking, really, really cool if you're doing stuff, if you're making your own trailers or making a little um, action short film or something like that. So um, we'll do that today and I'm going to do it in both Final Cut Pro 10 and After Effects CS5. Um, I know not all of you have these programs, I mean if you have Final Cut 7 you can kind of translate um, the same steps into that program, it's all kind of fairly similar in terms of um, the process. So um, we'll start with Final Cut and then we'll move on to After Effects afterwards. Okay guys, so here we are in Final Cut 10, so the first thing you want to do is go over to your text panel or titles panel and take the custom text from the top and let's drag it onto your timeline, like that. At the minute we've just got it saying title, so you want to change that, I'm just going to type test just for the purpose of this um, tutorial. And you want to choose something that looks a bit cooler, a bit a kind of more of a cinema text, it doesn't really work as well this effect if it's a kind of namby pamby Times New Roman font. So I'm going to go with Agency FB, which is standard films, this kind of signature font. Bring the size up, so you keep nice and big, and then just play with the baseline just to get it in the centre. So at the minute, look a bit boring. So what you want to do is go down to face, show that, and then choose a colour. So I'm going to go for a kind of light bluey, um, very light blue even, kind of colour there. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is go over to your effects panel, type in vignette, get the vignette effect, and drag it on top of your clip. So at the minute, no immediate kind of change, but if we change the size that we're seeing, and you, you'll get this kind of line. Now if you drag that in, you'll start to get a kind of feathering around the edge of the text, if we zoom in to see that a little bit better. You kind of start to get this feathering look, and it kind of just um, darkens around the edges, which is, look, looks pretty cool. So that's what it's looking like so far, a bit better. So next, to kind of get the movement of the text that we were talking about, if we zoom in, click on this little arrow here, and go to Show Video Animation and all of these kind of different uh, tracks, if you like, will pop up. So with the um, text selected, and make sure you're on the video tab, come down to scale, and make sure your player head is towards the start of the clip. We can, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Add a keyframe, and then change this value here to 999, like that. So the text is absolutely massive now. And then all you want to do is literally move forward a couple of frames just about that would be enough. Set another keyframe, and then put this let this uh, amount to about 105 on the scale now. So within that time, you're going to get it's gonna, the text is going to move like that. So that looks pretty cool. But it kind of just stops. There's no kind of real movement to it after it stops. So what you want to do is come all the way to the end, just over here. Add another keyframe, and then change this amount to about 95. So what all that's doing is it's just taking it's just scaling that text down very slowly after the initial kind of big um, intro. So it'll go something like this. So you can see it kind of just fades out a little bit, kind of just you know fades into the background, which is cool. So the next thing you want to do is just take these keyframes, just click them and drag them, just you know just fine tune them a little bit. I always have that one right at the start, and you want this one right at the end. So just drag it along like that. So that's looking pretty good. The next thing you want to do is get rid of vignette and go to radial blur. Sorry, not radial blur, zoom blur. You want to go to zoom blur, which is this one. Drag it on top of your clip, like so, and you're going to get this huge kind of blur, and that's looking really cool. We don't want that all the way through, so again, we're going to do some keyframing. Come up to the top here on the amount for zoom, set a keyframe and move that to the start. So it's at 32, which is the default setting. Then you want to come, move along a little bit, and just after where the text stops from its initial thing, set another keyframe, and move the amount down to zero, like that. So now, in that gap, we've got a really kind of big zoom motion blur, which again, it looks really good, and then it kind of just moves into the back. So we're nearly done. The last thing you want to do is come down, or sorry, just go over to here, Set an opacity keyframe right at the start of your clip. So again, make sure your player head is towards the start. Set an opacity keyframe like that. 
and start it off on zero, okay? And make sure zero is all the way at the end. Then moving the plane head along a little bit again. You want to zoom in a little bit here. Just, just about halfway along that kind of initial zoom, you want to set another opacity keyframe and bring it up to 100 like that. And then towards the end, we can do the same as we've done with all the other kind of ones you want to slow kind of fall off. So all you've got to do is set another opacity keyframe right at the end and set it to zero. Basically, it's going to look something like this when you're finished. If I zoom out and I play it for you, it's going to kind of zoom in like that and then slowly fade out into the background. So now we're going to move on to After Effects. So what we want to do to start off is right click down here, go to New and Text. So I'll use the same text again. We'll type in Test and that's in a really strange font. So if we go up and choose again something a little blocky, just a bit cooler looking than your normal font and I'm just going to bring my tracking down there because it's a million miles away. Like that, bring the size up and I'll go with the red. I'll go with the red. It looks pretty cool. We'll go with the red. So you want to position that text in the middle. Now I do prefer After Effects for doing um, text because that's a lot more kind of versatile with what you can do. So what you want to do is, oh, not, not that zoom, zoom in. So at the minute I've got about 15 seconds or so on my timeline, that's fine. So the first thing you want to do is go over to your effects and presets panel, type in ramp and drop it on to your thingy. That's the wrong place. Drop it on, sorry, to your text. Like that. So at the minute it's looking really odd, but what you want to do is change this white one to the colour you want your text, so the red, and then drag it into the middle. So what I'm going to do is also is change the ramp shape to radial like that. So now the red's in the middle and the black is the outside. No, the black's the inside. Let me just do that all again, shall we? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is come over to your effects and so the first thing you want to do is go over to your effects and presets panel, type in your ramp, and drop it onto your text like so. So at the minute, we're looking white and black, which is not what we want. So go over to the ramp shape, change that to radial, and then move the top circle down, and that's black. So if we change the black up here, it's the colour we want the text, so that kind of deep red, and then change the white one to the black just to give it that soft vignette again. And already I think this text is looking much better than it did in the Final Cut Pro version. So once you've got that, um, I tend to go to New Solid again. Change your colour, so I'm going to go with black. Make comp size and press OK. So And drag that solid just underneath your test there. So chop it off, just make it the same size as the text. So that's Apple Shift D, I believe. Then we've got this. So again, I'm going to apply a ramp to that bottom solid now, change the black to a kind of mm, a deep kind of blue colour, something like that, and then the white to a black, and then just change it to radial, like that. So now we've got something like that. Looking pretty good. So the next thing you want to do is animate your text. So if you go to S for scale like that, set a keyframe and bring your scale up to whatever you want. So at the minute it's moving around this anchor point, it's scaling around this anchor point, which is not what we want. It doesn't look really odd. So press A for anchor point and move it, move your anchor point until it is in the center of your text. So I'm gonna go along, and I'd say that's about the middle. If we go back to scale and bring the scale down, we should be able to see it's now scaling around that point. And you can kind of just fine tune your anchor point like that. So go back to scale, bring your scale all the way up, something along those lines, and then set the text into the middle of the screen. Then move your player head along, and change this value to 105. So it's not just like we did in Final Cut. Next thing you want to do is highlight both these keyframes, drag your mouse a selection over them, right click one of them, go to Keyframe Assistant and Easy Ease. Basically this just makes a smoother kind of transition between the two keyframes, okay? Something like that. So let's just let that render quickly, and we'll play it back. That's what it looks like. That looks very slow at the minute. So you can fine tune it to move one of those keyframes towards each other like that. So that should be a bit better within that time. Still too slow. So it really is just a case of trial and error with After Effects. 
that's about right. And then towards the end, just set another one, another keyframe, and bring your scale to 95 as before. So now we've got that, the next thing you want to do is go over to your layers kind of panel over here, click this kind of tennis ball looking icon, which is motion blur, select that on for that layer, and then go up here and turn it on there as well. Basically, that means within the course of that movement, it will apply a blur for you, which is a lot easier. So then you've got that looking really good. You can just go, go click on text, click T for transparency. Set a keyframe at the start, set it to zero. Move up until the text is about halfway done, change it to 100, not 10, 100. <laughs> and then it's the same again, just add another keyframe and set it to zero, just let it to fall off nicely into the background like that. I know it's not great, I've kind of chosen the wrong colour scheme for this, you don't really want that blue, so I'm going to take that background out. Like that, and then that's looking pretty good. Um, you can also pair some sound effects with this, which makes a um, huge amount of difference. Um, I would definitely recommend it, and I'll put a link in the description to one of my favourite YouTube channels to get sound effects, you can have a browse. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about the tutorial, just whack them in the comments below and we'll try and reply to you as soon as possible. Um, if you have any requests for tutorials, again, in the comments below. Um, I know I keep saying we will do optical flares, we will get around to it eventually. Um, that will probably be my next one. Um, but I'll also try and cover any requests that you guys do have um, after that. So, um, until next time, we'll see you soon.